Jason, how are you? If you have not signed in to the back, would you please sign in for us? Are another of you about ready? Okay, well, we got a quorum in this time. Ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the March meeting for the Zoning Board of Appeals for 2013. For those of you that may have never been to one of our meetings, let me explain how we operate so you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. Someone from staff will come to the lectern. They'll give us the meet of the request. After they have presented it, there probably will be discussions and or questions by the board. Once we are satisfied, we have heard staff's side, then I will ask if there are any persons here that wish to speak for the proposal. If there are multiple people, I ask that one person please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record. Please give us the information you'd like for us to take under advisement. Once you have <clears throat> Once you have presented your case or the further information, there may be questions and or discussions from the board. If there are multiple people here in support of the case, then we ask that one person give us the uh, agenda, the, the meat of the question that's being before us. We don't need to have three or four or five people come up and give us the same information again. However, if you feel like something has not been brought to our attention that is important, please come to the lecture, give us your name and address for the record, and we will listen to what you have to say. Once we have heard from that side, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition, or <coughs> if there are any persons here that have questions about what is being requested. Please come to the lecture, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the benefit of the information you'd like for us to take on advisement. Once we have heard from both sides, we will attempt to render a decision here. However, it is in the bylaws that if we feel like information is lacking or conflicting or parties need to talk, we do have the right to postpone until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, Ms. Brazel, you have the floor, please, ma'am. The first case that we'll call is Lyons County case BAR 2013-02 for Cracker Barrel Old Country Store, 4914 Timber Drive, Lake Park. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I don't have my PowerPoint presentation with me, um, so I do apologize, but I don't think you'll need it for this particular case. Okay. But our first case before you today is a request by Cracker Barrel. They're requesting to replace the non-conforming sign with another non-conforming sign. Subject property is located on Timber Drive in Lake Park, Georgia. Um, their current sign is considered non-conforming. It is non-conforming in the fact it is it exceeds our current height requirement. Our current height requirement is 70 feet, and the applicant is proposing to go back with a the 140 overall height um, for their proposed sign. They're also proposing to put in a smaller cabinet 
Um, their current cabinet measures about 650 square feet, and they're proposing to go back with a 420 square foot cabinet. Um, according to the applicant, the process of time has contributed to sign deterioration, and they would like to move forward with replacing that sign. Um, staff looked at this, and it's of the opinion that the proposed sign does not appear that it would cause any substantial detriment to the adjacent property as cited in criteria D, and the improvements will establish the stability of the sign um, in order to make it safe. So with that, staff has recommended approval um, for to, to replace this, this not conforming sign. Okay, and the, the sign that is there now that is not conforming was okay at the time it was put in, but became non-conforming under the new ULDC, or? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Any and other questions? Any discussions? Yes, ma'am. What is the tallest sign of the neighboring signs that you crack on your own I don't have an answer to that. Um, in riding that site, Cracker Barrel appears to be the tallest of you know all the signs that are nearby just from my riding by the side and posting the property. Wouldn't most of them be non-conforming by today's standards? I just wondered what kind of difference was there with the tallest sign versus this sign. And as a matter of fact, prior to the UODC, the county sign ordinance was about two pages. And with the adoption of the UODC, we went from a two-page ordinance to like a 30-page. So there are a lot of non-conforming signs out there. How many feet away from the highway is the sign? Is the sign? It appears to be right along the property line. Um, if I had to guess, the setback will be anywhere from 15 to 20 feet. The back can see it. She can answer that question more accurately. Any other questions or discussion? Carmel, what does the UODC allow for um, the square footage of the sign? We, I see that this one, uh, 650 as it exists, um, and then going back to 420, is that correct? That's correct. The UODC will cap up to 750, and that's based on the form of five square feet for every linear feet, and they have about 270 feet on the I-75 side, so they will be capped at 750. So we're not increasing the height, and we're significantly decreasing the message board square footage. Yes, that is good. Yes, did you have a question? Well, I was just going to tell Scott that it actually drops the sign four feet. I don't know if you picked up on that because of the square footage. It's going to be four feet. Is the existing sign or the replacement sign currently in the Georgia DOT right away? No. Okay. So it's all on private property. They're currently. Any other questions? Discussion? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you, Ms. Rutherford. Is there anyone here that would like to give us any additional information from Cracker Barrel? Here. Janine Stewart, 7000 Highway 64 East, War Trace, Tennessee, Cracker Barrel Country Stores. Uh, I'm here basically to answer any other questions that you have. I want to thank Chairman and the board and staff for letting us bring this request to you. Um, the presentation is basically self-explanatory. Um, the existing cabinet is deteriorating. Um, we put a useful life on our cabinets of 25 years, and this one is at 23 plus now. Um, but we do want to put up something smaller and, and much easier to maintain. Uh, if you've noticed in the booklet, we lose the visibility if we drop it to 70 feet. And what most people don't realize is that most of our interstate stores, the travel piece, as much as this is your community store, their community store in Lake Park, that's 40% of their business. Um, folks being able to see that store and locate where it is. And it's the southbound approach that's the most important. How far is it from the highway itself? How far is the sign located from the Well, your DOT right-of-way has, that varies between the exit ramps and the actual 
lanes of the interstate. Um, we are at least 25 feet off of our property line. So then you have that much more of the right of way. There's a bill before the legislature right now that suggests that um, all trees be cut down that could reach to the interstate. So this would be like a tall tree that could be cut down um, that if it reaches the interstate. Um, so I'm curious, I mean, it's not gonna just fall down because the wind blows, maybe, but. No. Um, no, and I was telling Carmela earlier during this process, we inspect all of our seal reports <coughs> every five years for that reason. Uh, we've never had one fall, but um, we are um, very vigorously making sure that every structure we have out there is structurally sound. And that entails bringing in certified well inspectors uh, that actually UT and ultrasound these wells all the way up and down that pipe. We even go as far as dig it up for low gray to check and make sure there's not excessive corrosion because that's a sleeping, you know, that's a sleeping giant if you don't check that. This one was checked last year, it is fine. That will continue to go on. You don't put in a new post all the way up, or you just no, put a cabinet? No, it's just a new cabinet, mountain plate cabinet. They, are they, they don't refurbish, same left, paint, or whatever? They will. Yes, sir. Any other questions, discussions at this time? Anyone here in support of this application would like to give us any additional information? Is anyone here in opposition or does anyone here have questions about what is being requested? Clarification about what's being requested. Okay, was there any other comments received in your office? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any questions, any discussions before we try to render some kind of decision on this case? I would say, Mr. Chairman, that it's evident that um, they've got to do something with the cabinet. Um, they're proposing a smaller cabinet than what's currently there, <coughs> so therefore I move that we approve as uh, following the staff's recommendation um, the variance, the continuation of a conforming or a non conforming use, citing criteria D. I have a motion on the floor from Mr. Ornstein. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Dr. Howell. All in favor, please raise a hand. <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you very Good much. Good luck with it. Hope it works out. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, the next case we'll call is City of Alamosa case, a, uh, application 2013-01, Macedonia First Baptist Church, 715 Little Lomax Drive. Holly, are you ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir, I am. Sorry, I was in my No, mind. no, that's fine. <laughs> this is a variance for a church, specifically Macedonia Tree, sorry, First Baptist Church, located at 715 Jail on Max Drive, 1835 North 6, surrounded by residentially used properties. Feel forward to the aerial. And given the church is one of the bigger parcels in the area, mostly surrounded by houses. If you'll take a look at the sign, the reason they're here in front of you is because our LDR does allow signage for smaller signs in residential districts. Specifically for institutional type uses, which does include churches, nursing homes, that kind of thing. They do, it does allow monument signs along with Romary Street frontage, no taller than six feet, no larger than 24 square feet in size. As you can see, this side is a little bit taller, 10 feet, and it's showing 33 square feet in areas. If you'll look at the field, you're looking at roughly a seven feet tall panel, approximately eight feet. So that's 56 square feet in copy area, potentially. Um, staff did review the sign. Unfortunately, there's no hardship to merit staff recommending for the variance request. So we recommend it for tonight. Any questions? Any questions or discussions from the board at this time? <clears throat> I've got a question. Yes. 
where exactly are they going to put the sign? At this point, we staff isn't sure. We have been in contact with church representatives, and they are understanding that the sign placement needs to be setbacks in terms of out on the 15 foot side, this is fine wall between the road and the driveway, and at least five feet off the property. Let's, let's get one of them up. We've got lots of potential discrepancies here. We need to get a little bit more information about where they want to put it and how they want to build it and any try to deal with the size differences that we've got before us. Any questions for staff before I take my front view, sir? Okay, will you back up one slide, please? Uh, not to split hairs, but what am I missing? Because if it's two foot to the bottom of the message board sign, whatever. And it's seven foot to the horizontal line. That, that means nine foot. So they're saying that it's only a foot from that horizontal line at the top to the peak of that angle. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So they're, they're, it, it matters to me. It's no more than 10 foot less the floor or add on the cross. That's, that's, that's what they're showing you. Okay. My, 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 what are the rules that apply to the sign? Is it is it the signage square footage where the actual lettering goes itself that is that is controlled, or is it the total sign size itself? It is a copy area. Generally speaking, for and I haven't seen a design of their graphics. Generally speaking, when I go to measure copy area, I'll draw a shape around it, whether it be a rectangular shape, a triangle, a circle, that kind of thing, and I'll figure out area that way. That controls the common area. Now, in terms of height, that's a different story. It's ground to the top of the structure. Okay. And is the cross included part of what you figure? No. As, as, as long as the cross is small, in other words, it's not sticking up 15 feet from right. As long as it's in substantial, we're not going to have a problem. Unless the DOA makes that a condition of approval. Any other questions or discussions at this time? I have one question. If I were reading this right, they can only, they supposedly they can only have one sign on the property? Yes, sir. So if they put this somewhere else, the one that is existing now has to come down? It should, yes, sir. Unless they come and ask for and something? Unless they change the request or unless Zoning Board of Appeals allows them, places some sort of condition on conditions of approval and allows it to stay. It's just just so I understand, you're saying the sign that has to come down is the one that's in the bottom right corner picture? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And how big is that sign? That, unfortunately, I don't know. I looked through permit history. The church is older, and I'm assuming the sign is older as well. There aren't any permits showing for that specific sign, which may be attributed to the sign being put up with permits before we started keeping new records. Um, Do we have you talk to Emily Foster from HBC? Yes. Uh, will, she, will she grant the extension for the approval from HBC? To my understanding, as long as what they present is very close to what she approved, yes, she will. Okay. Any other questions or discussions at this time? Thank you very much, Tracy. Is there anyone here from the church who would like to Give us any additional information. Yes, sir. Thanks, uh, Council Jennings, a member of Nationality First Baptist Church. Good afternoon. Um, we all know who you are, Jennings, but I need your address for the record. Address is 2410 Patrick Place, Valdosta, Lowndes County, Georgia. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman uh, and Board, thank you for allowing me to appear before you today. Um, I'm going to see if I can answer some of the questions that's been presented uh, before you. Okay. Before, um, 
Yes. Do you have anything you want to add to what she presented before we start dealing with questions? Or do you want to add? I want to, to ask you if you received the application that was made. Uh, the application that we, the church made. We made. get what staff puts together, which is based on the information you give them. Yes, we do not have the actual application that you fill out. Yes, sir. The reason I was asking that is because when the question, when you all asked the question a few minutes ago, where was the sign going to be? That is, that is in the uh, application. And uh, I have the application here. If I may read this portion. Okay. Clarifying that it says that, uh, uh, let's see here. Macedonia, Macedonia First Baptist Church is a large structure which sits near the southern right of way <coughs> of JL 5 And the picture up top to the left will show, show that best, okay? Now, <clears throat> the marquee will sit just east of the church. It needs to be high enough to be visible to uh, traffic traveling east and west on JL Omax Drive. Now you see the church sits, the, uh, the ramp that you see there, in front of the church on its left mm -hmm. side, uh, that's the east side, okay? So it will sit to between that portion and the driveway entrance. And there's plenty enough room for the setback, but she was saying, you know, she didn't know where it was going to be. Okay, so Situated. maybe about halfway between the, the side of the church and that power pole. It would be right, yes. It would be in this area, yes. Coming from Front here, all this is up. Frontage will be in this area there. That's, that's all. It's east of the church. In other words. Um, and, and you're planning, oh, of course, you know the, the setback off of the property <coughs> line, Tracy, is how much? Five, that would be at least five feet off the property line. Okay, so it would have to be five feet from the property line, not five feet from the street. Uh, not five feet from the sidewalk, but five feet from the property line. Yes. It may set it back 17 feet. Well, yeah, it set it back uh, several feet from the, uh, but what I was pointing out was that the fact that this church, if you're going east on JL Lomax Drive, this church blocks your entire view. I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know we were talking, the reason we want the sign to be elevated. Uh, not on the ground using the, can you go back to that slide, to that uh, picture there? With the brick portion being anchored into the ground, the brick portion of the, that you see right here. Right. Uh, that would be, everybody else saying it? Mm -hmm. okay, will be anchored in the ground. And the <coughs> sign will actually, will take place from the bottom of the, um, the number. That there's 56 square feet in there, not uh, 33 points. Uh, whatever, uh, that's not, it's actually 56, so. And <clears throat> what you want to do is, when you go back to that, with the church on the front of the church, you notice um, on the left side, well, you can see the right side there, you see how high, and all that's real close to the road, it just about butts on the right of way. Okay, so you can't see that until you almost pass it reason that we want to put it up where, where the church can be identified. The church has been there uh, probably since this, before this sign ordinance came into existence. It's been in that location over 100 years right there. Um, so, and it's 148 years old as of last month. Uh, so what we, uh, it's a, the street itself is a, is a narrow street. Uh, am I okay to go ahead and check? Yes, yes, please. It's a, it's, a, it's a very narrow street, and uh, it, when, you're, when you're coming by, you'll pass the church before you can actually see the sign if it's down low. You, you will never see it when you head from west to east. And, and I took some pictures, and I said, well, you don't have an application, but I, I attached pictures to the back of it uh, showing Showing uh, the church itself when, when you come across in front of there. I'm just showing what we've done. These are what we've done. 
Yeah, that's that's what I would. I, this is going. This is the west side. If you were going down. The yes, ma'am. That is the west side. side. You see, you had you're going from east from west to east. You mm -hmm. see, on that picture there, you can't see the other side of that building. Mm -hmm. You can never see it. Right, and that's, no, that's one of the questions I was asking or the point that I was making. Yes, sir. By the time you set it five foot off the property line, you're going to have to be pretty much in front of the church for you to be able to see it if you're going eastbound. Now, yes, westbound, you'll have all the opportunity in the world to see it. Exactly, and, that, and that's the unique situation for that sign. One to have a sign up and one to have one large enough so you'll be able to see it. And, and you know, you, if it's large enough so it could be clear to see Macedonia First Baptist Church uh, there that's much better than a small sign that's sitting down on the ground and you never see it there edges along the front of that property and you know we, we like to leave those there uh, that's, that go along the front of the property uh, are those shown in your pictures? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, yes so, so there's um, and and there has, um, and I, I'd just like to point out to the committee that, to the, uh, the group that this church is trying to set an example for the west side in that area. Uh, we've been working in that area, talking to people in that area, and, and trying to do some improvement in that area. Uh, there's very little improvement in that area. Uh, you drive down that street, you see a lot of uh, dilapidated, unoccupied, vacant buildings that are eyesores. And, uh, so this can only, this will only prove the building. It will not be a detriment in any manner whatsoever to uh, the neighborhood, <coughs> the surrounding, around the surrounding properties. Um, <coughs> It will, the, um, the reverence of grant will not impair or injure other properties or improvements in the neighborhood in which the subject property is located, nor will it impair any adequate supply of sunlight, air, uh, to adjacent properties. Uh, we will not increase any congestion uh, in the area on the street. It won't be a, a danger to fire. For safety, it will not create any hazard. It will not create any navigational problem for air. There, there's nothing uh, in terms of that this sign will do to diminish the neighborhood and cause problems in the area from, from what uh, we see. size of the sanctuary. Our church is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a large church. Um, it is um, the sand that we have now has, has not been utilized very much. It, you can't see it basically from the road. I, I can't see it. Let me put it like that. If, if I'm going along there, you know, I look at it, I can't see what's on there. Um, and we, we, want, we want to be in order. We want it to um, be a very nice sign. We've been working on improvements with our church. We have our plan that we, we're going along with. The safety of the church was first. We did a rewiring. We, we, uh, we have done things to make the community better. We bought other properties there uh, next to the church. Uh, as you all remember, there was a, a, a commercial apartment building. Remember that, Mr. Strickland? It was it was owned by yeah it was owned by uh, one of the insurance uh, agents uh, short gentleman I can't think of the name right now but uh, that was a that was commercial property area and he, he had he had about uh, 15 20 apartments there if I remember correctly and I know I remember correctly because I've been a member of that church ever since I was a little boy and I'm 63 so um, what I'm saying is that the the variance that we're asking for will improve and will not be a detriment to this area whatsoever. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you want to ask. Okay, first. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. 
once y'all, if y'all get this approval, once you honor the setback, have you figured out approximately how many parking spaces that it might eliminate because of the sign, or will it eliminate any? And if it will, Tracy, does this, is there a requirement for so many parking spaces for churches? There is a requirement, and it's based on the number of six seats or the size of the space. The largest we need are in the church. But they'd be okay, I guess, because they own so much land around that they just put some more trees. There will not be any, uh, there will not be any problem created by having the sign at the um, area that it's required to be. Mm -hmm. We will not create a problem with parking whatsoever. They, 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 I'm assuming engineering or somebody went out and did a calculation, looked at the open areas, and because it's there's nothing parked because it's all grass. Right. As far as basically with parking, as long as they're not adding anything, they're not doing any rehab work, so to speak. There's nothing that would trigger them to mark the parking spaces or to add on to parking. Okay, so that's that's not an issue right now. Right. We need to deal with. All right. right. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I have a lot of questions. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I have a lot of questions. What's the speed limit on the street? All right. The speed limit on that on, on uh, the street is it's, it was recently reduced to uh, I think 30 miles per hour. 25, it, it was reduced to 30 miles an hour. Is that, is that correct? That's right. correct. 30 miles an hour is what it is. It's a now, pretty narrow street. Yes, ma'am. Well, you can't really speed down that street. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can. Please, ma'am. I, 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 I respectfully <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I respectfully uh, disagree. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, activity. We own, we own the property where the park is, also. You know what the park is? Uh, the church owns that property. And, and uh, we've been working with the city to uh, improve that and to patrol that property and to have it for the children. And one of the problems that we have is people coming through there wide open. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the reason that you want to have uh, the parking
can't just run off anywhere. You got to go to fenced areas. Um, now, what we do as members of the church, we try to make sure that when anyone is leaving, either going or leaving the church, that that they have more than one person with them. That's been a policy that we kind of have. And so, what we do is we try to make sure for for safety. Uh, night services, like we had um, last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, ended at uh, 9, 8 30, 9 o'clock at night. We, we make sure that everybody is there and leaving before we, before we leave. So, safety has always been a concern in recent years, in the last several, several years, in that area right there. So, we try to we, we address that all the time. <clears throat> And then the reason to have it up high is so that people can see it above the bushes and as they come past the church that it's tall enough, as I come down the street past the church that it's standing tall, that's the reason for the height. Because the building blocks, if I said set so close, now they wouldn't allow you to build it right. uh, there, okay? Uh, well, 100 years ago. So when you come going from west to east, you have to... Uh, Past the church before you can even get a blessing sign. And that's that's the reason that needs to be working these things. Okay. Any other questions? Rick? No, that's all. Okay, I have a question. Yes, sir. What is the church planning to do with the existing sign? Are they going to take it over there? We'll take that down. Uh, I, I, I was told when I met uh, a colleague last uh, about. I guess three or four weeks ago when she posted the sign, she had a question about the distance between the building and where the sign would be placed, and I, we, we talked about that. And she also mentioned about the removal of the sign, so we'll, we'll remove that sign. Okay. Any other questions? Um, you would say 